Hello and welcome to FeatherCast. My name is Rich Bowen and today I'm speaking with Nirajan Selvanathan, who is from the and I'm going to have to ask you how to how you pronounce this in your project, the API 6 project? Yeah, it's API 6. Okay, so I got that right. Um, and this is a project that's in the incubator. And so I'm really not particularly familiar with this. So we're going to, to rely on you to tell us what this is. But I'll read the description from the website. It says it's a cloud-native microservices API gateway. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah, sure, Rich. And thank you for having me here. So the concept of API Gateway has been there for quite quite some time. And if you take a API Gateway, it acts as a border gateway or a single point of entry into your system. Hence, in a nutshell, all these client requests would go through the API Gateway first, and it will be sent to the relevant services. And therefore, this can be either used to like expose your applications to the internet or it can be either used inside the internet itself for your microservices to communicate with each other. And another, in addition to these request routing, these API gateways are also capable of doing other functionalities such as uh, load balancing, caching, monitoring, and request transformation. And I got introduced to API 6 uh, quite recently and uh, while we were doing uh, evaluation on API gateways for a project and for my surprise, there were quite a lot of API gateways out there. And some were quite popular and been there for years. And this intrigued me on wondering why would Apache incubate API gateway? And that the was reason my next question. <laughs> <laughs> and the re recent turns out to be due to the landscape of the internet right now. So if you consider like more than a decade ago, the API gateways did not have requirements for such high performance. The internet traffic around that time was mostly running through browser to server, and the intranet traffic was less. And also, the API gateways designed around that time were limited to the technology around that time. However, there's a quite a lot of traffic right now with the internet, with mobile phones, 4G, like IoT devices. And it's anyway going to go up with this introduction of 5G technologies. And at the same time, this intranet traffic is also getting increased due to this popularity of these microservice architectures. Therefore, in this new business domain, there are quite a bit of new requirements for the API gateway. And I would say one of the major requirements would be performance and the ability to scale up and down at will. And API 6 seems to do a better job at that. If you look at the performance uh, uh, criteria, it outperforms some of the mostly known API gateways by five to 10 times. And these benchmarks are available in the repository itself. And uh, the implementation is based on Nginx, etcd, and Lua. In contrast to traditional API gateways, API 6 can also do like dynamic reloading and dynamic routing plus protocol transcoding. So if you are doing API management in the microservice level, these are quite useful. And I would say another second major design principle of API 6 would be to be cloud native friendly. Mm -hmm. It achieved this by having a, like a very light architecture and also like very low memory footprint. So you can have a very quick boot up time and this containerization is also quite easy. And as this is a like cloud native application, this can be also hosted inside like hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environments as well. So in conclusion, I could say like, even though API 6 is quite new to the industry, it addresses some of the requirements which are posted by the era of microservices and cloud native landscape. For folks that aren't real familiar with how the incubator works, this project wasn't born within Apache, it came to Apache. Um, how long has the project been around independently? I assume it was for a, quite a bit of short time. So they okay. started developing around March, I guess, and it was open sourced on okay. June, and it went to the incubator around at the last quarter of 2019. So it's still it's still a young project. Is it uh, mature and usable in production? Yes, in the sense, uh, like uh, we are getting quite a bit of adoption in the industry right now. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at our scenario, we at our team at Salzburg Research wanted to build an API gateway for a European Union project called eFactory. So European Union has been funding 
many projects over the years in the context of industry 4.0, which is in the manufacturing industry. And eFactory is an effort to like integrate such platforms in a federated manner and to provide seamless access. As we are dealing with quite a lot of huge manufacturing platforms, the latency turned out, turned out to be a, quite a bit of priority for us. And API 6 was really good at that. And we also had another requirement because we do deal with multiple platforms and multiple authentication boundaries. Mm -hmm. So we needed a way to write authentication and authorization plugins in an elegant way. And due to this modular architecture and stateless nature of these plugins, we found it quite a bit easier to write plugins compared to other API gateways. Okay. And the third reason would be we do deal with a lot of manufacturing data, especially MQTT. And having the MQTT support in the API gateway was a good addition to us. So there were, therefore, we started using API 6 as our API security gateway in this project to authenticate, authorize, and enforce policies. Where are you in the incubation process? Right now, we are having the discussion how can we proceed with the graduation. Our community has been quite active throughout the year, and we've been in the incubator for about, I guess, about seven months. And in the seven months, we have released up to six Apache releases, so like almost one release per month. And we do have, as this incubator, we do have quite a lot of like features in the pipeline, and we would love to get new incubators, like new committers as well. Yes, so we are in currently in the discussion of like how to proceed with the graduation. All right. Well, let me ask you some more about those two things. Then, what what is coming? What's uh, what's in the pipeline for future releases? Yes, if you consider the project, it has two major parts. One is the dashboard, and other one is the core. So currently, the dashboard is getting revamped into React. Further releases, what we are planning to do is uh, we are planning to support Apache Skyworking to mm -hmm. have a better traceability in the system. And further upon the releases, we'll, we are going to also support other open source Apache libraries uh, in order to be compatible with API 6. And with regard to the other comment you made about attracting new committers and new developers, what kind of skills um, would I need to, to uh, get involved in your project? What sort of things are you looking for in new contributors? Yes, if you take the dashboard, it's mainly like front end skills, which is React and these uh, like uh, and design. And when it comes to core, it's uh, mainly written in Lua. So even I was a bit uh, unaware un un about Lua when I came into this project, but it seems to be it's uh, the syntax is somewhat similar to Python. And it, yes. if you get uh, put up a one one day or two, you can quite simply learn it. And I would say like. Most of the features are developed as plugins, and these are in stateless and have their independent execution time. So, like, it's quite easy to get into development without like having to know the entire architecture. So, it's a quite plus. And we do also have quite a beginner friendly issues in our repository, so the committers can check it out and see. Where do we need to come to engage with your community and talk with you? We do mainly communicate in our developer mailing list, but some users tend to come, uh, kind of like discuss features in the GitHub, mm -hmm. and we do also have this Slack as well. So you can hop on to any one of these medium in to get in touch with the community. Regarding the documentation, so we are still improving the docs. So currently, the docs are available in the repository itself, mm -hmm. and we do also have other external articles and links linked in the project repository. Apart from that, we do also have an official Twitter account, so you can follow it to get major updates and releases. Well, thank you, Nirajan. Thank you very much for taking time to speak with me. Thanks. Thank you again, Rich.